Nations of the Sioux, to the Cheyenne, to the Crow, who have been our... Interesting facts about famous people. What were the worst westerns of the 50s? We all have our favorite western from the 50s. For every great movie, there is at least one that didn't do so well. All subjective, of course. This video is on some of these. Not my personal choices, but based on ratings. Let me know what you think. Maybe you'll add or remove some. If you like this video, hit the notification button and get my new videos as they come up. Take a look at my channel to see all my videos. The link is in the description. Apologies for any mispronunciation of names. Let's have some fun and celebrate the genre. Nineteen fifty, The Caribou Trail. Director, Edwin L. Marin. Jim Redfern dreams of owning his own cattle ranch and along with his partners, Mike Evans and Ling, heads off on the Caribou Trail into the interior of British Columbia. There's a gold rush on and along the way they're joined by old-timer Grizzly Winters, a prospector who hasn't had much luck of late. They soon come up against Frank Walsh, whose men stampede their cattle. Evans is injured, causing Redfin to have to amputate his left arm. Evans hates him for that and will have nothing to do with him or his dreams of the cattle ranch. Walsh owns the local town, making it difficult for Redfin to get re-established. Things begin to go his way when he finds gold. 1951, The Painted Hills. Director, Harold F. Cress. The Painted Hills was MGM's last Lassie movie, at its worst. The dog-centric western didn't even garner a review in the New York Times, the only one in the series. Viewers report the flick, feeling like a shell of a movie and one of the most forgettable movies ever seen. Right now. Never mind the dog, Tommy. Tommy, you rustle up some wood. I'll see about the food. I'm all right, Joe. 1952, The Big Trees. Director, Felix E. Feist. Kirk Douglas acted for free in order to end his contract with Warner Brothers, and it shows playing a conniving timber baron who wants to chop down a swath of giant sequoia trees to make millions. Meanwhile, a Quaker colony has set up a homestead in the area and is bent on doing everything they can to stop Douglas. A poor script and underdeveloped storyline keep this movie from being the hit it could have been. 1953, Kansas Pacific. Director, Ray Nazaro. Sterling Hayden struggled in Kansas Pacific, attempting to outsmart southern saboteurs in order to bring the railroad through Kansas and beyond, while romancing the foreman's daughter. In the end, it may have been too much for him, as this western was criticised as a cookie cutter and banal. 1954, Sitting Bull, director, Sidney Salco, set in the lead up to the Battle of Little Bighorn. Sitting Bull shows Major Parrish, played by Dale Robertson, trying to prevent bloodshed by arranging a meeting between Sioux Chief Sitting Bull and President Grant. Unfortunately, aggressive General Custer foils his plans, pushing the Sioux to react with violence, resulting in Parrish's court-martial, trying to be historically epic. This film missed the mark, often criticised for how against reality its events are. 1955, Five Guns West. Director, Roger Corman. Dorothy Malone played the love interest in Five Guns West. A convoluted plot. Five criminals, set to be hanged, are pardoned by joining the Confederate Army, then assigned to retrieve a shipment of stolen gold. On the way, they take Malone's character as a hostage, saved after one of the men in the gang turns out to be a planted Confederate officer, produced over nine days on a tiny budget mocked as the worst western of 1955 for its stupid plot. 1956, Gunslinger, director, Roger Corman. A rare western led by a female character, Beverly Garland. Rose Hood assumes the job as marshal after her husband is killed, set on avenging his death, not aware she has a price on her head and that the man she admires could be hired to kill her. 
Most viewers agree that Gunslinger is a joke. It found itself in the it's so bad it's good category, and many do have a soft spot for it. Nineteen fifty seven Gun Glory Director Roy Rowland. In this romp, a reformed gunslinger, Stuart Granger, is trying to settle down to ranch life. The town isn't keen on his return. That is until Granger's character saves their land from a cattleman who's threatening to run twenty thousand cattle through it, effectively ruining everything. Called boring and tiresome. One disgusted viewer even said that most school plays are better put together than this terrible western. 1958, The Sheriff of Fractured Jaw, director Raoul Walsh. Following an upper crust Englishman who accidentally stopped an Indian attack on a stagecoach before being appointed sheriff of a small frontier town. The plot is nonsensical. Some viewers don't appreciate the humour. Many agree that this is a so bad it's good movie, great for family movie night. 1959, Curse of the Undead, director Edwin Dean. Newly arrived gunslinger Drake Robbie has an aversion to the sun. All the young women in town have been mysteriously dying, so it's up to preacher Dan Young to save the town and his girl, played by Kathleen Crowley. Many appreciate the imaginative twists in Curse of the Undead. Nearly all agree that the story was not handled well and didn't do a good job to blend the genres. 1959. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the notification button so you will see my new videos as they come up. You can take a look at my channel to see all my other videos. The link is in the description. Take a look at my Facebook page as well. I appreciate likes and subscribers. You can help me out here and share this video with your friends. Bye for now. See you again soon. Please take time to take a look at my Facebook page for new information.